Good morning, and thank you for coming to Story Hour with Book and Puppet Company. My name is Andy, and today we're going to be reading Dear Juno by So Young Pak, illustrated by Susan Kathleen Hartung. Did you get a letter? It came in the mail. It comes with an envelope, and you have to open it, and inside, a paper with somebody's writing on it. It's a letter to you. Dear Juno, Hey, wait a minute. This tree seems to have this cat and a little bug. There's Juno, a cat and a butterfly. Who's this? Somebody else is reading. It's a letter. Somebody's reading a letter and somebody else... You think so? Let's find out who this is. It seems like one tree. Juno! There's Juno. Juno watched as the red and white blinking lights soared across the night sky like shooting stars. What is this flying across the sky? Do you know what this is that Juno sees flying across the sky? Did you ever see one of these flying in the sky? Juno watched as the red and white blinking lights soared across the night sky like shooting stars and waited as they disappeared in two far away places. Juno wondered where they came from. He wondered where they were going. And he wondered if any of the planes, I know, you were right, it was an airplane up in the sky. Dahlia came too. I don't know if Dahlia went on a plane before. Did you go on a plane? Let's find out. Hi, Dahlia. Did you go on a plane? Did you ever go on an airplane? No. Did yes, your... You... I, 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 been on, I, I have been on an airplane. Did your horse go on an airplane? No, because... Because a big horse. It's a big toy that you can go on. He wondered if any of the planes came from a little town near Seoul, where his grandmother lived, and where she ate persimmons every evening before bed. Look, it might go to your grandma. Did you go on a plane to your grandma? Uh, no. He's it, wondering. Yeah, uh, yeah, I did. Juno is wondering if this plane is going to his grandma. Maybe you are on this plane going to your grandma. I don't know. Juno looked at the letter. It came that day. Look, this letter came. It was long and white and smudged. He saw the red and blue marks on the edges and knew the letter came from far away. His name and address were neatly printed on the front. So he knew the letter was for him. Look at this letter that came. It was a... In the mail, a letter had come for Juno. This puppy is there. It might be a wolf. It looks like a wolf. But it, 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 the wolf is looking at him. It's a very friendly wolf. If it's, it, it's And fireflies are there, too. Juno looked at the letter that came that day. It was long and white and smudged. He saw the red and blue marks on the edges and knew the letter came from far away. His name and address were neatly printed on the front, so he knew the letter was for him. Did you get a letter for you? But best of all, the special stamp on the corner told Juno that the letter was from his grandmother. He got a letter from his grandmother. 
Through the window, Juno could see his parents. He saw bubbles growing in the sink! No, just stay there. Bubbles are growing in the sink! He saw dirty dishes waiting to be washed. He knew he would have to wait for the cleaning to be done before his parents could read the letter to him. That's not fair. He has to wait until the dishes to read his letter. Maybe I can read the inside too, Juno said to his dog, Sam. Sam wagged his tail. Very carefully, Juno opened the envelope. Uh-oh, I don't know whether he's supposed to or not. Inside, he found a letter folded into a neat small square. He unfolded it, tucked inside were a picture and a dried flower. Juno looked at the letters and words. He couldn't understand. Look at these letters. Do you do you know how to read these letters? No, they're not they don't look real. They're different kinds of letters. He pulled out the photograph. It was a picture of his grandmother holding a cat. He pulled out the red and yellow flower. It felt light and gentle, like a dried leaf. Juno smiled. Come on, Sam, Juno said. Let's find Mom and Dad. I think his mom and dad are going to have to read these letters because they're different letters and different words. Grandma has a new cat, Juno said as he handed the letter to his mother. And she's growing red and yellow flowers in her garden. How do you know she has a new cat? Juno's father asked. She wouldn't send me a picture of a strange cat, said Juno. I guess not, said Juno's father. How do you know the flower is from her garden? asked Juno's mother. She wouldn't send me a flower from someone else's garden, Juno answered. No, she wouldn't, said Juno's mother. Then Juno's mother read him the letter. I guess Juno's mother knows how to read those different letters. Dear Juno, how are you? I have a new cat to keep me company. I named him Juno after you. He can't help me weed, but the rabbits no longer come to eat my flowers. Grandma, just like you read it yourself, Juno's father said. I did read it, Juno said. Yes, you did, said his mother. You can almost see See, there's a picture, and that's like Juno's, Juno imagined what was happening at his grandma's house just because he knew. At school, Juno showed his class his grandmother's picture and dried flower. His teacher even pinned the letter to the board. Look at this. At school, the letter's on the board. All day long, Juno kept peeking at the flower from his grandmother's garden. He didn't have a garden that grew flowers, but he had a swinging tree. Juno looked at the letter pinned to the board. Did his grandmother like getting letters too? Yes, Juno thought. She likes getting letters just like I do. So Juno decided to write one. After school, Juno ran to his backyard. He picked a leaf from the swinging tree, the biggest leaf he could find. Juno found his mother, who was sitting at her desk. He showed her the leaf. I'm going to write a letter, he told her. I'm sure it will be a very nice letter, she answered, and gave him a big yellow envelope. Yes, it will, Juno said, 
and then he began to draw. First, he drew a picture of his mom and dad standing outside the house. Second, he drew a picture of Sam playing underneath his big swinging tree. Then, very carefully, Juno drew a picture of himself standing under an airplane in a starry nighttime sky. After he was finished, he placed everything in the envelope. So here's the pictures. Should I turn it over? I'll turn it over so you can sort of see them. There's the picture, mom and dad in his house. And here's the picture, swinging tree with Sam. And here's the picture, Juno with the airplane. Sam is very relaxed there while he's getting his letter ready. Here's my letter, Juno announced proudly. You can read it if you want. Juno's father looked in the envelope. He pulled out the leaf. Only a big swinging tree could grow a leaf like this big, he said. Juno's mother pulled out one of the drawings. What a fine picture, she said. It takes a good artist to say so much with a drawing. Juno's father patted Juno on the head. It's just like a real letter, he said. It is a real letter, Juno said. It certainly is, said his mother. Then they mailed the envelope and waited. Can you imagine Juno's mother when she opened the envelope in Korea? Here's a picture of what it must have looked like when Juno's grandmother, sorry, when Juno's grandmother got that letter. See, the pictures went through the mail. One day a big envelope came. It was from Juno's grandmother. This time Juno didn't wait at all. He opened the envelope right away. Inside Juno found a box of colored pencils. He knew she wanted another letter. Next he pulled out a picture of his grandmother. He noticed she was sitting with a cat and two kittens. He thought for a moment and laughed. Now his grandmother would have to find a new name for her cat. In Korea, Juno was a boy's name, not a girl's. Then he pulled out a small toy plane. Juno smiled. His grandmother was coming for a visit. This was not just a letter. This was a whole package that he got this time. Look, it had colored pencils. There's the toy plane. Maybe she'll bring her cat when she comes to visit, Juno said to Sam as he climbed into bed. Maybe you two will be friends. A wolf. Mm -hmm. I know, it could be a wolf. Juno was fast, soon Juno was fast asleep. And when he dreamed that night, he dreamed about a faraway place. A village just outside Seoul, where his grandmother, whose gray hair sat on top of her head like a powdered donut, was sipping her morning tea. The cool air feels crisp against her cheek, crisp enough to crackle, he dreams, like the golden leaves which cover the persimmon garden. Mm. And here is what it's like inside of Juno's dream, where his grandmother is sitting. I in dreamed the about love. What did you dream? I dreamed about I dream I dreamed about wolves and, and vacations and a lot of things. A lot. That's so beautiful. I love the idea that you dreamed about wolves on vacation. No, and I dreamed about vacation. It was like it was, we were going to vacation. I was dreaming. Of but was there a wolf in the vacation? What? Was there a wolf on your vacation? I know. But they're not open. 
soon. Soon it'll be open. No, no, no. Okay, that's the end of the story hour. So we were reading Dear Juno by So Young Pak. And if you want to get this, you can click the link and we have it for 20% off at Book and Puppet. And have a great day, everybody. Have a great day, Dahlia. See you soon. Bye. Bye.